It's today with John and Helen, your host on TV Breakfast Show. And next is our guest, Nasir Mohammed, and is widely recognized as Nas Magnificent, a multifaceted artist celebrated for his remarkable talent as a dancer, a choreographer, a visionary costume designer, and a trailblazer in the innovative dance genre known as Afro Buck. Ooh. And that's an electrifying fusion of African and Crump dance styles. Helen, you don't know what that is, I'm sure. I have no idea. <laughs> Nas Magnificent is the visionary founder behind the vibrant dance community Freestyle Friday with NM. This thriving community serves as a, a dynamic hub for dancers of all backgrounds to connect, collaborate, and continuously elevate their artistic prowess. Over the past four years, believe it or not, Freestyle Friday with Nasir Mohammed NM has experienced consistent growth. And it now boasts the affiliation of some of Nigeria's most prominent and influential dancers, he proudly said to us. <laughs> Nas envisions a bright future for this community, aspiring mm -hmm. to transform it into a globally renowned organization. And uh, his vision encompasses cultivating a cater of world-class dancers by providing them with the essential skills and comprehensive self-development -de tra training that they may need to propel them to the pinnacle of their crafts. Also, through his unwavering dedication, Nas aims to shape the next generation of dance luminaries, and he focuses on getting the young generation passionate about dance with his unique lessons for kids and young adults, setting the stage for their remarkable achievement on the global scene. And that, in a nutshell, not sure. <laughs> is Nas. <laughs> Welcome, Nas. Thank you so much. Nas for having Mohammed, me. the magnificent. Thank yes. you for having me. Nas okay. magnificent. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's a fusion of what and what kind of music? I mean, for the dance style, it's um, crump, crump, and then the African. I guess you, do, you have no idea what crump is. Okay, okay. Crump, crump is um, crump is spelled K R U M P. Yes. Um, started in the year two thousand mm -hmm. in L A. No, first Helen. She's crump. the one who. Did. I don't know. She's the one who. Oh, you know. Don't you know. <laughs> don't settle down and learn. Yeah, don't pretend. All right, do all right. My young black Americans. Um, one of the unique thing about the dance style is, and it helps them transfer their um negative energy into a positive one. Wow. What I mean is they, most of them are gangsters. So instead of fighting themselves physically, mm -hmm. they put okay, it so in a dance form. Mm -hmm. So when you see the dance, it looks energetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks aggressive, but it is not aggressive. Okay. You understand? <laughs> so that's, that's one unique part, that the fact that it just transforms that negative energy into positive art. Yeah. I, I think, I think uh, the entertainment industry basically or generally does that uh, when you took, think of artists dancers they are the painters mm. you know talents the talents generally there's something inside of them that is expressed yeah, ex ex you know on the outside exactly. and dance is it exactly wow okay so nasir the arts has been a huge translation in transition in the last or has seen a huge transition in the last um, 10 years from being an industry for lazy, in court youth, you know, to being an industry so large that um, a lot of people are even envious in and it's become an export for this country. Yeah. Talk to us about your journey, you know, fashion, music, dance and all of it. How has it been so far? All right. Um, firstly, I would say I, dance is not something I think I chose. Not I think, I didn't choose it. Mm -hmm. I usually say that dance chose me. Okay. Right? Because what I mean is, in the early stage when you're young, dance is attractive to lots of young people. Yeah. Like when you see the people who are involved, they're young, vibrant people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I want to learn this trend, that trend. So when I was younger, you get those Michael Jackson involved then. So I caught up. My parents used to bring CDs to the house. I liked it. Everybody wants to show off in school that you can move. You get, then after a while, you're expected to grow out of it. Mm -hmm. You understand? So this is the part where I said dance shows me. 
No, I'm trying to grow out of it. I'm not, it's not, I'm not growing out of it. Okay. I still find myself in it, you understand? Mm. So then it, it goes from a hobby to what you like to a career. And now you now have to learn how to work with it as a career. Learn the business side of it. Mm. You get, learn the things to complement it, mm. you understand? Mm. So you don't just learn how to dance. Now you now have to learn the fashion of dance, wow. you understand? Um, you have to learn every other thing that complements that dancing so that you can give a full package out mm. when you're, you get selling your, your, your product or when you're advertising to clients and stuff. So yeah, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so far, like I said, it chose me. Um, I'm learning, I, I went to school, but yeah, I didn't study dancing in school. <laughs> mm. I, wish, I, wish dance, I wish dance chose me as well. <laughs> because uh, it couldn't possibly have chosen you without giving you some economic gratification at the same time. Okay, so tell us. You know, I'm being sincere. Yeah, on, yeah, hang yeah on. you know that, that's it. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Be sincere. How profitable has this transition been for dance artists and you know artists in general? Uh, okay, um, in this part of the world, yes, right. First of, firstly, from the house, from I mean, from the African home, the way it is perceived, right? You're not supposed to say you want to take dance as a career. You're not you supposed get, to say. Yeah, because our parents have an idea of. Um, <coughs> I don't know what to call them. Call it a cake. Mm -hmm. Not that much. Like the like younger it. people that you're working with. They are the ones forcing the change, but okay. our parents have their own ideas they and they're stuck to perception. it. So you will yeah. fight them to survive. Mm. You yeah. get So, yeah, me saying I want to dance wasn't easy for my parents to take. And then they let me know how. On, and then because of that system, in fact, you get, when you have an, uh, an, env if you're in an environment where the people in power don't see that craft as something that you that should call it serious. craft. It wouldn't, you get, so there won't be so much investment. You get, sure. Nobody sure. wants to put their money into it. So yeah. that's why it's lagging behind. So there's no money in dance. You get, and then truthfully, in the early stage, it was just passion. Mm. It was just passion, mm -hmm. you get. Yeah. And at the point where, like I said, the art form chose me, I'm like, let me go. We're not giving me any money. It's like, bro, you are going to dance, stay with me, you get. Okay. So it was tough. Okay. It was tough. And then that now made me thank God for education. I was like, okay, now learn other things to complement it. Mm. Learn other things so you don't starve. And that's so a huge. I went point into crafting. Yeah. You get. Yeah. I started making costuming. You get. Okay. I learned how to I did videos for people. So I was surviving with those things while I was still pushing still the art from that. Your passion. Yeah. And then it gets to a point, this dance that I've been Pushing so much starts paying off. And you know how it is. The building that takes the longest time to build the foundation turns out to be the, the strongest. Best. So right now, yeah. dance is the, <laughs> okay. dance is the so biggest. So that's your main state. It's the biggest business it's for you. Business right. business. And that's why we have you on this show. Because we, exactly. we know that there are loads of young people like you. Um, girls and guys out there yeah. who have this dance passion in them. And they don't know how to turn it into business. So that's why we're looking at dance. As a, business. as a business. So if you were to speak to the younger people out there who want to do um, dance, you know, and um, want it to be a main source of, of sustenance, yeah. you know, financial, you know, it, it's business and it will be good business for them. How can you help them? Okay, first, firstly, I wouldn't really advise any young person to take one source or one thing as a major source. You were advised in this um, dispensation that you should smartly have mm. different streams, okay. of, especially if you live in a part like Nigeria, a country like Nigeria, at least you should have one more thing that assists you. You get, you have the ability to be, to learn more than just a thing. So I would not advise. But then if you insist and say, okay, I want this ex alone to be, and I'll tell you, go and get information, knowledge. Hmm. Go and understand business. Yeah. Yes, you love to dance. You're passionate about it, but you have to study the business side of it. You have to understand how to package your dancing. You have to understand how to sell your dancing. You want to make the big, big box. You know the guys that have this big money. You have to know their language. Hmm. You can't go and go to a, 
to an, for example, Dangote's office, and then you go looking like a street person because mm. you say you are a dancer, and then you are using slangs to talk to the man, and then you are cross leg. You, you need to understand all those important things that will put you in a place for that kind of connection. And you that's business so etiquette. there's information that a whole lot of information that these young people need to get. It goes beyond just, I really feel like, it goes beyond the, the passion, it goes beyond the, the enthusiasm of, I just want to move. Just before you come in, John, what this says to me is that you can't do it alone. You probably need a team. Exactly. You know, you exactly. need someone to I was, manage yeah, me. I was going to get there, you can't do it alone. Someone who knows more about the financial aspect. You are the artist. Yeah. So find other people who have um, other qualities to complement you. Exactly. You don't necessarily have business. to be the brain. You are the energy. Fine. But right? you get the brain. Like, I don't sign, I, I sign the documents, but I don't read the documents alone when mm. they come. Yeah. yeah. No, you understand? Yeah. I, can, I can put a choreography together in 20 minutes, but I probably will not be able to read two pages and understand it in two hours. Wow. <laughs> because right. yeah. then you have clauses and stuff that mm. you need a lawyer yeah. who is specialized. So I have the lawyer, I have the person who is in charge of several things that put NAS together. Mm. So I'm not the guy who is attending to everybody. So oh, yes, wow. you need help. Wow. You need help. You can't do it alone. Hmm. Yeah. This is getting quite interesting. Mm. In, in fact, when I grow up, I want to be like you. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now talk to me one on one, Nas. Let's let's leave the link out. Talk to me. Now, now explain to me with you know with a work port portfolio that's as huge and rich as yours. You know, from working with several entertainment companies and doing all kinds of things, oh, right. and dancing and you're promoting dance here and there. How easy or difficult has it been? You know, juggling all of this. You know, together as well as uh, managing the transition. All right. Because um, now I, I, I'm ready to, to receive change. Okay. Uh, it, yes, that's not been easy, <laughs> right? That's not been easy, but it, it's worth it. It's worth it. Now, the things that I said just now, I, I had to apply. Okay. So I got information, yeah. right? Um, I have people who sort out for confidence. You get, and then when they do, I have a product. You get, and I need to know how to sell that product. So why am I saying this? For example, my show, the Freestyle Friday show. Now, most brands will not just come and put their money into you if you have not, to a point, sacrificed to mm -hmm. a point mm -hmm. for you, what you believe in. So there's a lot of sacrifices I have put into starting up that show, the Freestyle Friday show, getting this community together. Now, these people are saying that, okay, he's doing this, he has started this, he can do this, and that builds trust with those brands. Then I have somebody, I have a middleman who does the talking, who does the connecting, and they meet me. So it's, yeah, it's that process of you get um, um, people helping out, uh, um, getting that knowledge, um, sacrificing my own time, cash, in what I believe in. Yes, it's all, all, all that put together. Yeah, like mm. I said, it's, it's like a putting a structure together. A brand, the a, branding a structure thing. Structure together for exactly. business. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what we did. Okay. So, yeah. um, when you talk dance, maybe because I'm female, um, cafe comes to mind, and from the back of my head, I, I seem to have come with her in her dance journey. And um, for a female, we know, you know, the terrain that she's been and how big she is yeah. and um, how relevant she is in the dance industry. So there are a few other people, a lot more other people like her, and here you are. How do you handle rejection? How do you handle competition? You know, is there a synergy between dancers, positive energy? between dancers in this country, for example, in the industry? Yeah. Um, What's the connectivity? How do you handle rejection and um, failures and all that? It's, it's almost, how would I put it? Everybody gets rejected one time or the other, right? If you're heading somewhere big, at a point in time, somebody will tell you no. Mm. Again, now it's up to you to want that to pull you back or keep going. Yeah, so when someone tells me no, or when 
uh, I feel like I've been rejected, I just go and find out why that happened and then we work on it. We work on it. Okay, <laughs> I just remember that one. <laughs> I, sent a, I, I sent a message, to a proposal to a, a brand. I didn't spell the company's name properly. No, you will not. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't spell it properly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And I typed that. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Oh my goodness. He came back. He didn't even read mm. the rest of it. He just mm. lashed out me. Mm. I'm not going to work with you for that. So wow. I stopped writing them myself. Yes. I, I was going to say that that writing. would have become a learning curve. That was how exactly. Yeah, so when you get rejected, we learn from you it. You learn yes. from it. You get you <laughs> learn from it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You learn from it. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Awesome. So um well, let's look about perceptions, you know, ancient perceptions. This lazy Nigerian youth narrative, you know. That pushed, that was pushed by the older generation some, some time back. How do you react to that now? We are not lazy. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not saying it just wants to defend us. Yes, we're not lazy. Yeah, no you can't even afford to be lazy. You can't. You cannot afford yeah, to be lazy. This environment will not allow you to be lazy. Yeah. Right. But what do you think informed that opinion? I think they judge a lot of things, but what they see on social media, and they assume that pe young people have so much time on their phones, and they, they, they complain about um, structure, and they're just there on their phone, mm. and they're not um, putting their energy to work. Instead, they're they are, they are beating down on the government and all that. So I feel like it's just an, a, a way to attack them back, mm. you understand, okay. which is not true. Okay. And it's should, not, should true. not be. And, and we have, and we have like 30 seconds, 30 seconds Okay, to go. so I'll throw in this question as quickly as possible, you know, and it's a question that is very important. There are lots of young people who want to be like you, okay. okay, but they're having the issues that you had when you set out. Issues of parents not understanding, you know, the value or the, 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 the need to encourage the children. What would be your message to these people, especially when they're thinking about what just happened to Mobad and the drug issues okay, and all of this okay, in okay. this kind of industry? I would say don't ignore your parents' um, um, warnings. Don't just knock them aside and say they don't understand what I'm doing. Try to explain. Try to get them to understand. And if they don't, as long as you're still under their roof, play by it. Mm. Play by their rules. Okay. But even when you're out there, you're play still their, their child. Rules. And yes. whatever happens to you, but you when know, but when them. you gain your freedom, and when I mean gain your freedom at a part, I don't know if eighteen is the age here, but when you are able to say, okay, I have to a point done what they want me to do, maybe go to school mm. and get my, then you can mm. now build on what you now want to do. So right okay. now, are you fulfilled as a dancer? Yeah, yeah, you are. Excellent. Okay. Okay, That's it. I have to stop. I needed you. to get that yes. from him. <laughs> <laughs> I just said as we were beginning to settle into this very <laughs> interesting conversation, the producer just whispered into my ears that we have we to have let to you go. go. Okay? You. okay? But you know what? You have to do a Next time we have to see some moves, though. Mm. Uh -huh. you, you, you this, is not this is not a talk talk <laughs> conversation. We need to we need have get our dancing shoes on and have you show us some things no, right no here. Problem. So okay? that's you. Mm -hmm. Promise us you'll be back. I will. Thank, thank you again so much. Thank, you, thank you. you. And that smile, though, is very, it's catchy. very, very catchy. <laughs> see you, see you. Look at you. Say catchy. You, you help me find the world. Thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, we can't thank you enough. Nas Magnificent. 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 <laughs> oh, John. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. No, no. Okay. You can. Okay. So really. I have enjoyed your company. You can tell that I have enjoyed your company. And please do come again. Oh, yeah. We will take a quick break right now when we return. A brilliant, beautiful, and exciting Chizoba Ofegu will be debuting on her segment today. She has a guest that you would love to meet. Don't go away. <laughs>